Hello, everyone. How are you? This is Alfonso Barrera. I am the founder of Hispanic Pro. I want to say thank you for joining us this afternoon. Uh, this is webinar number 28 for us since the pandemic uh, started back in March. Well, since the whole um, stay at home order here in the state of Illinois, this is something that we would do person to person, but we're just as happy to do it in webinar form so that everyone can be safe. Uh, we can be responsible, but still deliver the insight and the knowledge uh, that we want to provide for our attendees, our subscribers, and everyone that's part of the Hispanic Pro uh, audience. So like um, every webinar, I would like to say some opening remarks. While the coronavirus pandemic certainly does create a series of new challenges for sales professionals, those that are able to take advantage of the opportunities available right now will be the most likely to thrive and survive during and after this crisis. Don't stop testing your approaches and tightening your processes. Now is the time to rethink how your sales experience can deliver value for new potential clients as a key element of your strategy in this COVID-19 world. Design a sales experience that helps customers gain insight about challenges, but also opportunities created by the pandemic. I want to thank our panelists as they represent a distinct set of values and insight that make them subject matter experts in sales and have taken the precious time of their busy day to share their insight and knowledge with us today. So I want to start off by uh, asking everyone the first question. Uh, just give us your name. What do you do and what is the pr primary function of your position? Let's start off with Alana. Hi everyone, my name is Alana Bentley. Um, uh, right now I work uh, for a leading telecommunications company um, that specializes in enabling IoT connectivity and IoT uh, connectivity management. So I primarily develop new business remotely um, from prospecting to contract and close. So um, it's a really exciting industry in tech sales and it, it definitely has that smart, um, you know, um, Silicon Valley feel and I really enjoy working in this industry because you get to touch into a lot of verticals uh, a lot of different types of companies it's not just one company who would be utilizing IOT today and IOT is you know becoming uh, a multi-billion dollar industry right now so it's just forever growing and um, so it's really exciting to see what type of devices people are bringing into the market and, and I get to learn about those devices and try to bring value to those devices through um, what type of platform they would like to connect to. So it's really exciting. Welcome. And yeah, you're in the right spot. A uh, <laughs> IoT and AI, it's like everything is, is, uh, is, is revolving around there when it comes to advances in technology for, for the near future. So uh, congrats Absolutely. for that. And, and thank you for joining us. And next we have uh, Emmanuel Lopez. Hi everyone, uh, Emmanuel Lopez here. Emmanuel, if I'm in trouble. Uh, so uh, again, uh, I'm with a company called uh, Better World Technology. Uh, we are actually one of the few B Corp certified uh, companies in the nation. Uh, so we help uh, you know, give back to our, our, our government and social injustice and things of that nature. But predominantly what we focus on is your, your managed service provider uh, telecommunications, focusing on desktop as a service, software as a service, uh, and things like that to be able to be your IT company away from your company at home. That's great, and th that's great that you're doing the the social good with pairing it up with the with the technology, which is uh, I think it's a it's a great winning combination. Yeah, it's been awesome. We have clients, you know, some of our clients and B Corp members are like B Corp, uh, or like um, Patagonia and Ben and Jerry's and Allbirds and things of that nature, companies like that. Great companies to to uh, to have in to have in in your roster of clients. And next we have Blanca Supervera. Hi everyone. Um, so thank you for having me here to share. And uh, my business is financial services. So I have a uh, I own my own business, Transformation Financial. I sit down with families, I assess their needs. They tell me what they need, what they're looking for, and um, a lot of the times it's. Uh, sometimes people don't know, you know, they need just a GPS. How do I get from point A to point B? So I sit down with families and uh, help them out and talk about their goals or dreams, what they want in the future, put some deadlines in there and make sure that they have a plan and a strategy to achieve them. Great. And it's good that they have you to hold them accountable for it, right? Or hold their hand along the way, because that's one of the things that 
um, you know, sometimes we, we get, when especially Latinos and, and financial planning, it's something that's, uh, it's something that's foreign to us, right? Because most Latinos, they keep their money under the mattress, you know, and uh, that's probably not the safest place to, to have it. So it's good that they have you to guide them and lead them and, uh, and provide them all the information that they need to do so that they, make, they can make some sound uh, financial decisions for themselves yes. and their families. Exactly. So let, let's uh, lead into the next question. Uh, did you have a mentor or a sponsor as you were coming up as a sales professional? If so, briefly describe the experience and impact it made on your career. And we'll start off, Blanca. Great. Definitely, definitely did have, uh, I actually have many mentors and uh, I feel like coming from the corporate world, working 20 years in the banking industry, this was something new to me. Um, transitioning from an employee to a business owner is huge. And so there's a mindset, you know, that we have to shift and surrounding yourself with other people that have already been there, that are entrepreneurs, that are in the field, that are in the business. Um, I have an amazing platform that I am surrounded by, um, by those individuals with experience. And I don't have to come in here um, by myself or, you know, um, you know, we always say you're in business for yourself, but you're, but you're not by yourself. So mentorship is huge and I have several of them. So definitely a huge, huge um, bonus and, and plus to, to be able to transition from the corporate world. And have, have these sponsors uh, or mentors, have, they, have, have you had them throughout your life? Has it, has it been like a select group of folks that have followed you through or, or is it different people for different seasons of, of, of your business? Because sometimes people can, can provide you with certain insight, but then you got to kind of pivot and, and you, know, you, you need a new, someone that can pro provide you insight into an industry that you weren't, you, know, you, you, didn't, you don't have uh, expertise in. Yeah, exactly. So it is the season that you're in. So growing up and just being in that in that banking industry in the world, I'm surrounded by a certain group of people, which I'm still learning from. But when I'm, you know, trying to, to be at a different level, definitely I need to surround myself. We need to surround ourselves with more other people and always be meeting new people. That's, that's uh, so important to always be meeting new people and networking and just uh, putting yourself out there and then talking to the individuals who are already are where you want to go. And so there's always, always meeting new, new friends. I'm constantly making new friends and new friendships. And so that's going to be ongoing. Excellent. Thank you. Emmanuel. Yeah, uh, kind of what Blanca said, I've, I've had the privilege of having many, many, many mentors throughout my career. Uh, you know, I think actually Alfonso says it all the time. I never meet a stranger. So it's, it's, it, I never know a stranger. So it's pretty much always, you know, being out there and being open and communicative with individuals. But kind of like also Blanca said, it is in seasons as far as mentorship. Uh, and then I've been lucky enough with this company that I'm with now, Better World, to actually invest back into us. So I have a, I have a, I have a business coach that I meet with uh, every other week uh, to help me forward my career within the organization. And, uh, you know, it's, it's phenomenal. But mentorship is, is, is something that I find is very important. And if you don't have one, you, you, you got to get on one. Yeah. And, and sometimes it, it doesn't necessarily have to be someone within the company, right? But someone Correct. That, was, that was a former, uh, former co-worker or someone that, you know, that you reached out to cold, but you admire, you admire their process, the way they close, the way they, they carry themselves and uh, because that also means a lot, right? You know, go oh, correct. hundred percent. It's not even just in sales in general. It's just, you know, different, uh, you know, I was fortunate enough in my previous career when I was with the Chicago land chamber of commerce that a lot of the board of directors and the board members there that are, you know, board members of fortune 100 companies, you know, did take me under their wing and would like take me to lunch and would have coffees and discussions with them in different sectors. If it's the nonprofit sector, if it's, you know, law, if it's a technology. So I've had that robust knowledge uh, through just different positions and in industries, not just in sales that have actually, uh, you know, put me in this place where I'm at. And I'm, I'm very thankful and blessed for that. Thank you, Emmanuel and Alana. So um, I have had um, some membership, mentorship, uh, uh, definitely, but um, it wasn't easy. I would say mentorship is it's a special thing that you really have to dig deep within yourself and, and really kind of design um, how that relationship is going to be and, and, and how you're going to be able to find someone who genuinely wants to see you progress and, you know, and, and understands, you know, who you are and what your best traits are and how to put them forward and how to develop you. So actually during the beginning of my career transition, um, I was actually 
was, you know, a housewife in Pakistan for like six years. And I came back fresh. Um, my last job before that was a store manager with CVS pharmacy and, you know, getting into sales without sales experience is one of the hardest things I think that you can do, but it really is a testament to how much commitment you have to being in sales and getting this sale. So um, I just was very determined. Um, and so I joined an organization called the National Sales Network and I attended their annual conference with no interviews, just a resume. And I did, I walked out with three interviews. I walked out with, you know, a handful of cards in my pocket and I really developed those relationships and I did gain a few mentors out of that. So, you know, it sometimes it's, it's not always given to you, you really got to find a mentor. You've got to kind of create that relationship and not everyone is deserving to be your mentor either, but it is important to find someone who sees your potential and can really help you, um, determine how to show that value to others because that definitely polished my skills. It got me the job I have today. It, um, it built my network. That's how I know Alfonso, you know, it's just, it's an amazing um, time to right now to just really dig deep into what you think you want to do in your career and, and, you know, leverage the people, you know, to really do that. So uh, kudos to all of you, you know, having a mentor right now. I mean, it's great. So definitely work on that if you don't have it. Yeah, and, and even and even if you you're not you know 100 completely sure because I don't think anyone is like what they what their career path is going to be that I think uh, you know um, becoming a member and associating yourself with pro professional organizations uh, mm -hmm. like in sales I've met David, David Richardson is a great guy I mean he's done a great job with uh, with NSN and it, and and it's a it's a great organization that provides guidance and and. Uh, and can pair you up with the with, with the people that you know that that will make a difference in in uh, giving you clarity in right. where you're going to go. And I think that's invaluable. Next is, what do you consider to be critical sales skills to have during the COVID nineteen pandemic? Alana, start with you. <laughs> I wanted to be funny with this one. Um, I think you need to have like your brand and your character ready because it's like, you know, people really remember you based off of that first encounter, either how your voice sounds, what you say. So, you know, it's very important to have that 30 second commercial ready. <laughs> so I would say that 30 second commercial is very, very important in this day and age because people just don't have time. They don't have time on the phone. They don't have time on Zoom. And they just really want to know the bread and butter of who you are and what you are doing and why you're reaching out in that first First 30 seconds so I think that's critical in today's world yes definitely definitely and I think uh like you said it's it's like it's the approach right and, and I think uh if they see like you you know come you know and, and obviously we can't go and visit folks right because um you know we can't go mm -hmm. and visit our, our our clients because of safety reasons right and being responsible but definitely that that same energy everything translates through through this computer screen here, you know, through a mm -hmm. webinar. And, and many people say, you know, the old school folks, I know they're like, oh, I want to be out there. But you know what, it's, I think we will get back to that day. But I think everything, you know, everything uh, isn't necessarily out the window because we, we can't see our customers face to face. I think that right. their, under, their understanding of the situations that we're in, because they have to deal with those situations with other people within their organizations, whether it's uh, vendors or other people that they do business with for their organization. So I think we're all kind of, we're all getting adjusted and, and, and we're all kind of trying to find our footing, even though we've been in this for nine months, but things change almost like every day. Mm -hmm. So we have very to, much so. Yeah. But I think adapting is a, is a big, is a big word that, that we should all like, uh, you know, keep in mind that, uh, and, and uh, again, it's, it's a, as long as we, we don't we don't uh, we don't step in in providing value, then I think we're, we're we'll be okay. Manny Emmanuel. Yeah, yeah. Now I would uh, kind of you know spot on and talk about your branding. Uh, you know, it, it's in sales. It's like sales one on one. People buy with emotion. So making sure that you can communicate uh, the person that you are and your energy through through Zoom or through uh, Messenger or, or things like that. Uh, one book that I would highly recommend uh, that came up this pandemic, which I am fairly, you know, in love with. It's called uh, Virtual Selling by Jeb Blunt. Mm -hmm. um, he pretty much just switched the game and he, he typed in a lot of, you know, he has a lot of books like high, 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 high 
profile prospecting, sales IQ, you know, so he kind of mixed it all into this one, one book during this pandemic, which is, which is, which is very phenomenal. Uh, so I highly recommend it. It's not, I'm more of a audio reader type of guy, not with the eyes, but more with the ears. So it was, you know, while, while I'm working and, and, and getting that down, um, it has helped me, you know, throughout just the lighting and the communication and just being able to help people, help people feel that joy or that sense of, you know, being able to address their needs and their wants uh, virtually. Yeah. And definitely it's like, you know, the, the, you know, learning through, through books and also through audibles and all those things, um, it's invaluable, you know, and it's like, I mean, you'd be surprised how, you know, you could be driving to the grocery store and you have an audio, you know, have an audible going through your speaker system. And then you'll, you'll, you'll find a, 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 a nugget there of information. It's like, wow. And then you like pull over. Like and I, got yeah. I got to write this down. Cause this yeah. is too good. And I, then, my, my email communicate, same thing. I was going to the grocery store and then it was like one of the chapters talking about email communication. And I literally just switched all my wording and my dialogue because everything that he says was wrong. I was doing to a T. So I'm like, you know what? Let me just switch it up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Blanca. So I have to agree with Alana and Emmanuel, but I'm also going to add uh, good listening skills, asking a lot of questions, getting to know people. I think that's, uh, you know, really important uh, to be able to, to find out what it is that they need. So um, I really believe in asking the right questions. Yeah. And, and no question is, no question is ever like, you know, a dumb question or a silly question. I think uh, you can never ask too many questions because that way you get to know your customer better exactly. and their needs, which is most importantly, right? Absolutely. And especially right now, it's very hard. Like, you know, what Michael was saying during, you know, this, this, this virtual connecting to read body languages, you know, a lot of us in, in, in sales have, you know, trained ourselves to, to read people's body language while you're talking to them, while you're listening to them, seeing how things affect them. And it's a little bit harder during this, this pandemic time frame. So being able to listen more and try to catch those cues uh, during this time frame via, via virtual is another, is another very big thing. I completely agree with Blanca on that one. My next question, did you transition into your career in sales? And if so, what industry were you in before? Can you name some transferable skills that have helped you along in sales from your prior jobs? I know that's kind of loaded, but <laughs> it all goes, it's all in the same. So uh, Manny, start with you. Uh, I actually have been in sales since I, I could remember. Uh, it's something that I've really just enjoyed uh, having, having, you know, been an athlete my whole life. It's just that, that competitive nature that's in me. That's why I really do enjoy sales. Now transitioning into the technology world coming from the, the chamber of commerce ha was a, was a um, 180 for me. So uh, that, that being said, just being able to just learn and load up on uh, information, having a great team behind me, uh, for for this transition has been very very good for me. But uh, every, at the end of the day, everything is in sales. No matter if you are in marketing, you're in sales. If you're and I, if you're a software engineer, you got to make you know the product so people can sell it. Whatever, if your business needs to drive, you are selling. You know, so at the end of the day, I look at it as everybody is on the sales team. Yeah, and, and when you said that, I it reminds me that everyone has to be conscious that uh, to make their job like they're delivering to the bottom line all the time, right? You, you yeah. always have to make it that way because if you don't, then you're not visible and you need to be highly visible within an organization. So, uh, because when we have times like this, that's what companies are looking at, right? Like who's performing and who's like back in the corner in the cuticle and I, I don't really know what they're doing back there. So you never want to be that person that they're fishing out. You want to be the person that's out ahead uh, and, 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 you know, and you're crushing, you're crushing your, you know, the expectations that you have for yourself, but also the expectations that your sales managers, uh, or, or your, your, your sales directors have, have, have placed for you. So, um, that's always important. Blanca. Uh, I would have to say, um, yeah, definitely. I think previous, our previous positions are, there's always something that we're going to take away from and me working in banking, uh, it was uh, very different. It's very different being an employee working at a bank. But what I could say is I've always been involved with volunteering. I love volunteering for different things that are going on. 
they're looking for, for help here. This organization is here. The, the bank where I worked was big on community outreach. So I was always, you know, volunteering and that helped me with my people skills and learning something new and understanding different personalities. And, and that goes way back, um, you know, volunteering even in college. So, you know, just taking advantage of those programs that previous jobs offer, you know, you're able to interact with more people and different personalities and understand different points of view. So that definitely took that away from, from my industry, my previous industry in the banking world. Alana. Yeah, so um, I agree with everyone again. And, um, I think that you do have to pull from your past experiences a lot. And um, especially for me coming from my past experience and the gaps that I've had, um, I really pulled from my operations and project management skill background. So, um, you know, in the industry I'm in, you know, we're selling kind of like enterprise solutions, right? <clears throat> it's just one of the most difficult sales because you're not necessarily selling, you know, a key card to fit, you know, this, you know, key holder, you know, it's not a pocket and key type of sale. It's really trying to understand the pain or the challenge that um, a company has. And then you try to understand how those challenges impact the company so that you can kind of leverage and that your product or service to solve that problem. So it's really difficult um, if you don't really understand op what, you know, how that might be impacting someone operationally or how that might be fitting into their, you know, uh, project management goal. Um, so I think that's really important if you can get some skills or get some um, experience that you can pull from, um, you know, traditional just, you know, um, operation handling or, or, you know, managing a team and understanding how each team has to contribute to a certain goal or project. I think that's really helped me um, as far as just understanding the needs of my customers and being able to show how I can alleviate some issues um, through that chain. So that's one of the things I thought of, but you know, it could be too convoluted. <laughs> Not at all. I mean, project management is, is, is it's, it's awesome to have that kind of background because that way you, you already know to work in a team, right? So, mm -hmm. and I remember, I mean, cause I've been doing this for 20 years. So uh, working, you know, sales usually was like, okay, you got your marching orders and you went out there. You had no, right. you had no type of support system, you know, no one to bounce ideas off of. So when, you know, when you have a project management, it's like, it's, it's the team wins the, you know, the team is the one that wins. Right. Mm -hmm. So, Absolutely. Um, yeah. and, and I think that definitely now, uh, sales is definitely team oriented. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's like when you do meet with a customer, it's that no, no, not always the person that is actually making the definitive, you know, close on this sale either. So it's like, you know, oh, depending on what type of title you're working with in the past, you know, oh, operationally, there should be some director over this person who might be, you know, um, making the final sale. So just you keep those notions in your head. And then you, you try to work around, you know, getting to the right people, or at least, you know, meeting the, the most important part of, of why they're wanting to make a switch or, or even think about your product in the first place. So those are one of the things that I, I keep in mind from my past. So, and it helps me. <laughs> Great. Thank you for sharing that. And then the next question is face-to-face -face networking is currently on hold. How are you filling your calendar with activities to make new connections and potential new leads? And we'll start with Alana. Sure. Um, you know, it's, it's interesting. I mean, face-to-face -face networking, I mean, is it a thing of the past? Is, it, is, it, is this the new way we stay face-to-face -face now? I think people really appreciate even just getting on a Zoom call. I know in those days right after, you know, quarantine had started, you know, I was like the first fresh face that some of my customers had ever seen, and, you know, or had seen in a while. So it's like, you know, we're still making those connections. And I think, um, I'm filling my calendar with lots of Zooms. I'm filling my calendar even outside of work with my network, um, with you know virtual coffees, things that can be engaging and fun over video um, that really do lead to you know building your network, building um, who you're involved with, building your volunteer opportunities. Absolutely, I also volunteer um, with a company that trains people in technology sales, and I think it's really important. Um, to just make that connection and be face to face, you know, even if you are in a zoom, I always encourage people, you know, show your camera, you know, look ready, you know, try not to be in your pajamas or in a t-shirt or sweats, you know, try to um, 
be engaging, try to be there, try to be present. Um, and so that's really how I try to keep my calendar filled with activities, I guess you could say, is just remaining present and staying focused on, you know, building connections as best as I can through this virtual time. Yeah, I still haven't done I, Vidyard yet, though. <laughs> and one thing I've learned is just like, you know, writing down some questions before you enter a webinar, because if you have the opportunity to ask them, ask them. That adds mm -hmm. visibility for you within this group of people that probably don't know you, right? But now yeah. you're now you're verbalizing yourself, you're asking a question, and they might follow up with you. You never know. And, and I've had it one instance where that has happened. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna keep doing that because it worked. So absolutely. Yep. So, and have your LinkedIn handle ready. <laughs> yes, definitely. Because that's one thing, that's a new trend. It's like everyone is asking for your LinkedIn handle in the chat. So, yep. Yeah, so that's, and maybe we should probably add ours in, in the chat <laughs> too, so. Uh, Definitely. Yeah, good habit to have. So, uh, Manny. I'm actually kind of enjoying it, to be, to be frank, as far as I could be, uh, in one day, I could be at a virtual networking event in Virginia, and then in the afternoon, Austin, Texas, and then in the evening in San Diego. You know, because I'm able to, you know, grow my brand and grow our company's brand nationwide without having to hop on a plane, rent a hotel, and do and, and do all that so it's been it's been really it's been really it's been fun for me in that aspect and not having to be face to face although i do miss the face to face engagement but taking it back and looking at the bright side it has allowed me to grow my brand and grow this company's brand and grow my network uh, at the end of the day nationwide than just you know having to drive to city to city to city uh, on that level so uh, and it kind of like a lot of said just creating more of that environment and and and, and volunteering, you know, with, with my organization as well, I'm very heavily in volunteering. Uh, and also just finding ways to support and give back. I was hosting events uh, on the East Coast and the Midwest and out West where I called um, your ticket price, your entry fee was, you, it was called Sip Local. So you had to get, you know, coffee, uh, whiskey or a beer from your local restaurant, local vendors. And that would be your entrance ticket to, you know, the networking event. And then that would be an icebreaker. And then you would break out with like your coffee people or your scotch people and things of that nature. You already have that, that, that first connection because people get zoomed out by the end of the day or zoomed out in the morning. So just more along the lines of just interacting with people and having that sense of relaxation while not working and having to, you know, feel like, you know, you're stressed out. So it has, it has given me the opportunity to just grow in that area. Uh, do, you, do you think, um, because I, I, I don't see this, I don't, I, I, don't, I don't see the Zoom, you know, go to webinar or whatever different, uh, you know, uh, Microsoft Teams. I, I don't see that going away. I mean, I don't see it going away even until July of, of next year. I mean, I think it's here to stay, uh, mainly because of, you know, health concerns and everything. But mm -hmm. I think that companies are figuring out that, hey, you know what, we can, we can kind of operate in this, in this world here and, um, and reduce cost and, um, and reducing that cost is going to offset, you know, the losses of what companies have have endured because of this year. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I think uh, if if we have webinar fatigue, we got we got to figure out a way to <clears throat> to make it fun, make it enjoyable, but also put forth our sales proposition and, and what we want to uh, what we want to sell and also what we want to, what we want to accomplish for for our customers. Blanca. So I really miss the networking and meeting people. I love that. And, uh, but I'm an optimist, right? We got to figure out what works and we got to pivot, like my mentors say. And so uh, just, we have to remember that we're not, you know, that everybody's in, is going through this as well. So all those networking events and all those, um, you know, organizations that we were connected with, they're also going virtual. So still attending those events, they're trying to get this up and running as well. So participating and being part of that, meeting people. And then what I've been doing, like Emmanuel said, uh, adding value, how can I add value? And so I used to do workshops, uh, in-person workshops. Now I'm doing them online. And then I'm reaching out to you know clients and uh, people that I've been meeting, getting referrals. I, I'm really big on referrals, um, financial service, you know, financial education, or you know, just this subject in general is very touchy subject. So referrals are, are so much easier to work with. So I get invited to schools, community groups, um, churches, like all these places to bring, you know, a workshop to them. And so that has been working phenomenal this year, um, being able to provide and add value 
you know, to, to all these different organizations and meeting people that way. You always have to be adding value. Always. All the time. Free workshop. Thank Absolutely. Thank you, Blanca. Uh, the next question actually addresses a question that Kia Beth has in, in the chat, which is, what has been your biggest sales challenge during COVID-19 pandemic to date? And also, has there been a big opportunity? If you can share that with us, let's start with Blanca. Um, so I've, I've seen an expansion right now, um, similar to what Emmanuel said, it's nation, I go nat nationwide, so I'm licensed, I can get licensed in every state if I, if I have to, but being able to expand has, has been a, a great, you know, thing this year, um, people, I also am a trainer, I train financial professionals, so now, you know, having that, you know, conflicts before where there's no time, now going online has been, has been helping a, a great deal. So we haven't really seen a lot of challenges. Um, it just, you know, mainly making sure that people are safe and their families are safe because, you know, you, you, nobody knows, you know, anybody could get, get affected. But um, I think the majority of this year has been expansion and, and people are reflecting more, uh, especially in their finances and getting their things in order and their health that they're putting this and their priorities where before it was in the back burner. So we've seen a lot of, a lot of, um, you know, a lot of expansion right now. Uh, now. Have you found that some of those challenges have come just because of ageism where, you know, people that are probably above 60 are, who are sharp and great people to work with or have as clients, but they're like, I don't do the technology thing. You know, the most I, the most I'll do is I'll, we can be on a phone, right? But, mm -hmm. but so that, I maybe that could be one challenge. Um, so I have my office here. I'm in the West Loop right now. So having to pay for an office that I'm not, I'm only here like maybe once or twice a week, you know, so that, that could be one, right? But I, I want to add value. So I want to be available for those clients, those particular clients that do not want to meet on Zoom, that are older, the, the baby boomer generation right now is retiring. So right. I'll need help. And so definitely having that, you know, that space. And I love my office. I will never give it up. Um, but yeah, 90% of it is virtual, but it, it's still that 10% that, that wants to meet in person. Great. Thank you. Uh, Alana. I would say just um, a lot of the challenge for my industry has been really budget. Um, that budget conversation is really difficult to have during a time where everything's very unpredictable and we don't have... Um, a fair projection of what these companies are going to be looking like in, you know, the recent future. So, um, or in the next, in the future. So that's probably the hardest thing um, for me right now and the biggest challenge. And, and the way that I try to overcome that challenge um, is to really stay very transparent on, on what it is, you know, my agenda might be and how it matches theirs. And then I also try to, you know, just make sure that I convey exactly, you know, what it is I, I'm wanting to understand that their business does and what, you know, and, and, and how we might be aligned. And if there is no alignment, I always give um, my customers a, a decision to say, hey, this might not be for you. Please feel free to let me know that. And I think having that real honest um, conversation is really helpful in times like these because people don't want to feel pressure during these times, you know, and I think that can really lose um, not only a sale, but a relationship that might have, you know, been better after COVID times. So now might be the time to kind of keep people in your back pocket as far as, you know, when COVID does end and, and they can, you know, they'll be like, oh, I remember Alana. I really wanted to reach back out to her. And that has happened over time um, uh, as some people did kind of break free of, of you know, COVID kind of in that maybe what August, August, September time, I saw a big jump during that time. And people who I'd talked to way back in January who weren't available in March now are available in September. So I would say just keep, um, keep yourself abreast of what's going on in, in that person's life, how that, you know, how they're impacted by COVID. And then also just don't try to ring in the sales so much, give some line, you know, give some line for them to, you know, make the decision and come up with it themselves. Um, that's my probably the best advice. Great. Thank you, Alana. How about Manny? Uh, yeah, for me, or just personally me, I, I do tend to feed off of colleagues and feed off of, you know, the team environment and just feed off of people in general. Um, so for me, it was more along the sense of, you know, 
staying focused and staying on track uh, was one of the hurdles for me. Uh, another book that I really recommend is Extreme Ownership. Uh, it was a, it's a really good uh, functional book about a Navy SEAL and then how you can apply it to business. And that kind of got me back on track. Uh, now, as far as our, my, our clients go, I would have to agree with a lot of uh, you know, technology. So the, the, the budget consent um, is one that I get a lot. Uh, but also at the end of the day, being able to communicate and, and, and let your uh, prospects or your clients know like what's in it for them. Uh, you know, you might not be that fit for that time. It might be a, a competitor of yours that it might come at a lower price point And you know that and you actually know someone at the competing company. Make that connection for that person. You know, make that make that introduction for them because they, they, at the end of the day, they're going to remember you and what you did for them. So it might not be that portion of the business for you. But when things do come back around, you know, there's going to be other areas and other opportunities. So making sure that, oh, you didn't come with me. is not like, a, OK, you're done. You're dead to me. Oh, it's like, oh, great. So how can I help you in other areas, with other people and just contain, continue to maintain those relationships and uh, with your with your prospects is something that I would highly say that um, has helped me with the COVID uh, as far as transitioning into this type of sales um, spectrum. Great. Yeah. And it's not like you're totally like pushing them off to a new, to someone, to a new client or anything. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's like making things easier for them. So that way they can come back and then do business mm -hmm. with you. Right. Uh, because that that's one of the things that you have to have in your tool chest is to be able to do that because that also shows confidence that, Hey, you know what, you know, right. And, and not, and not, and, and that you're not being pushy as well. Mm -hmm. That's the one thing that, you know, the salespeople get a, get, get a reputation for is that, Oh, this, this person was too pushy, you know, and it may not even be that it's just that you're enthusiastic. You really do see how your products align with, with what this person needs, but they just may not be ready to pull the trigger at that time. Mm -hmm. Let's go on to the next question. How did you land your most successful sale? Blanca. I would have to say through referrals, making those connections. Again, going back to financial services is a very touchy subject, right? You're, you're talking about people's finances and their money. And so just having those referrals and that, you know, uh, peace of mind that, okay, this person had a great experience. So that means that, you know, I'm going to be open to learning something new. Um, and so to me, that that's huge. It always has come from referrals. I've seen that. And then hearing the story, like I've had um, so, uh, a couple, you know, that I met with, they said, you know, um, you know, I asked specifically for a woman because last time that I sat down with a, an advisor, the gentleman was just looking at my husband. He wasn't looking at me and I'm like, I'm here too. And so just, I love hearing those stories like woman to woman or just Latinos in general, seeing another Latino helping them with their finances and being able to relate. So, um, so those have been through referrals. Um, and I always use the example of a car mechanic. So when I was younger, and my car would break down. I hated to go to mechanic because I'm like, I don't know if they're gonna, if they're telling me the truth. I don't know anything about cars, right? But if somebody said, hey, go to this mechanic, I know him, you know, tell him you know me, then I had that peace of mind. Okay, I'm gonna go there and I'm gonna get, you know, some some real help. So referrals are just huge. They're golden. Yeah, absolutely. And salespeople need to know that they need to cater to women in, in when it comes to Latinos because they're they're the they're, they're the people that are bringing in the bread when it comes to the Latino household. They're, they're the majority of the breadwinners in, the, in that household. And, and not only that, but they also make of the big financial decisions for the household, for the family. Manny. Um, I would have to say something that one of my mentors actually told me a long time ago. Uh, he was actually one of, the, one of the vice presidents over at Discover Financial. He told me, he goes, Manny, you're never going to close a deal in a boardroom. Or, you know, you're always going to close a big deal on the golf course or the tennis court. And that's when, you know, I took it seriously. And I think all of my major deals have come from just personal interaction, genuine conversation, not thinking about, oh, the sales cadence, the sales process, I got to make a call here, let's follow up with the email, do an outreach, no, blah, blah, blah. Just that genuine need and want and just helping people out because um, all those, you know, barriers have been broken down and being able to help them out. That's how I've gotten all my sales have actually been on the golf course <laughs> yeah yeah definitely and and uh you also have to be conscious that a, a lot of the people who who will give you the will give you the sale uh they like doing business old school mm -hmm. you know and and uh and not only that because they 
the, the more, I think one of the most important, and if not the most important thing in sales is that you have to gain someone's trust. Mm -hmm. And that's not going to happen. Um, you know, we, we, we're trying to make it so that we can do it here. Right. But a lot of times they got to look you in the eye because they're, 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 you know, they're putting their name on the line for you. Right. And, and not only that, but you're, they're taking you for your word that you're going to, um, your word and your, and your company's reputation that you're going to deliver on what you said you're going to do. Alana. Um, I think just in light of COVID, I've seen a lot of success with um, not really trying to make a customer feel so close and tied into a deal. Um, I think giving a bit of a gradual transition is a great way to ease in um, customers during this time, just to make them feel very comfortable, make them feel like they're not locked in and have, you know, buyer's remorse very, you know, soon after, um, because people can always break out of a deal that way. So if you have a great product, you know, feel free to trial, you know, what that product is with people. Um, you know, if you want to negotiate a contract, you know, early on and have that trial flip to, you know, then going straight into a contract after that, I think that's a great way um, to build confidence in your product with your customers and, and also just you as a person to let them know, you know, you're not trying to nail them to, uh, you know, to any type of decision right away or too soon for them, especially if they're not ready. So if you ever come across anyone, especially nowadays, I come across a lot of people who just aren't ready to make the transition really quickly. Um, I try to, you know, give a very transparent idea of what their contract's going to look like. And then I just give them time to kind of try it out. And that seemed to be the best way um, to get people um, trusting the product and trusting, you know, that they're, they're in good hands. So I would say being able to do that is great. is a great option. Yeah, and don't and don't overthink it. I think that's what probably the biggest thing is. I think as sales professionals, we uh, we tend to overthink the process and like, oh, it's a six figure deal, seven figure, you know, it's, it's a huge deal. I got to do this, make sure it's bam, 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 in order, and just just don't overthink it. And I think that's how I've come along the way with like the my most successful closes have been just not overthinking it. <laughs> and, and I think that we overthink it because the services that that are there for us to use to help to aid us in sales have been overthought, mm -hmm. you know, think about thinking up, think about when you pull up Salesforce and there's so many fields that you have to fill in about, and it's like, oh man, do I, it's like, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's like I, most of this I remember in my mind. Right. And it's like, and, and I'm not going to be pulling up my app and seeing, oh, well, this person's kids were born, you know, this date or whatever. Mm -hmm. it's like, if you have a personal relationship with this person, you're going to carry that with you. Right. You're going to know that. So, uh, and I think that some, 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 pro nothing against Salesforce because I actually, we use it. Some of the processes have been thought, overthought and, and they're losing that human element. Right. And I think more than any, more than any time, like now is the one thing that, that, uh, that people are looking for. They're, they're looking for that human touch and, uh, not only that, but the understanding and the empathy that, that goes with it. What do you find the most rewarding aspect about your career in sales? Alana? For me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I would think um, the most rewarding aspect right now is just um, my sense of driving business. Um, I think that is something that can carry over and can transfer into all you know, parts of your life, you know, staying very organized and knowing how to drive, you know, a business from start to finish or a contract from start to finish, or even your schedule from start to finish is really important, especially in this remote life where we're living and you might not even want to wake up until, you know, noon, but, you know, if you have, you know, that drive to, you know, engage yourself in, in your business and, and what you have to do in every aspect of your life, I think that's really important and it keeps you really grounded and ready for whatever, you know, life has to throw at you. So even transitioning into this life of, you know, not going into the office every day, I think, you know, my drive to, you know, stay ahead of, you know, whatever was coming really helped, you know, set up the office, set up the kids homeschooling and things like that. I think that was, you know, all really based on and what I've gained from just understanding how to drive myself and and, and be a business owner or be a business manager um, for myself. So I think that's really what sales has brought into me. And it's been very rewarding and a lot of different aspects of my life. Great. Thank you. Emmanuel. Um, I would have to say uh, the flexibility, uh, being in sales and having that flexibility to be able to uh, work on your own schedule. Uh, I do tend to say yes to everything. Uh, so like right now I sit on the board uh, for Alpha, uh, Easter Seals, Gateway for Cancer Research, 
and I'm the president of the University of Oklahoma Alumni Club here in Chicago. So being able to have that flexibility to connect people within my network for like the association that I do give back to, uh, and not only grow my brand and connecting, but just being able to have that uh, sense of comfort that, oh, I can't do it because I'm, I'm, I gotta you know, be here, da, 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 da. But just having that sense of flexibility knowing I'm gonna get the job done, I'm gonna be able to connect people and at the end of the day, just have that nice, fuzzy, warm feeling in my heart. It does, and I've, I've known you for years, Manny. I know that you, that you genuinely really enjoy doing that for people. Yeah. So it's, uh, you know, people appreciate that for sure. Blanca. Well, I have to agree with both. Um, flexibility is huge, being able to have that flexibility and also the control of, you know, when you want to work. I could help, I could say, you know what, I want to sit down with, you know, 10 families this month or, you know what, I want to help 50 families this month and I want to go see my grandmother who's in Mexico and I could just go anytime and, you know, I was, you know, grateful enough to, to, I'm grateful that I was able to go out there four times this year because, you know, I, I would never have been able to do that without the flexibility that I have or the control over how much I make. So in sales, you have that control and, and it's great. And it's, it's, um, it's like a, you know, that freedom that, you know, that people are looking for to have that independence and being able to make your own decisions and also be flexible with clients because in my industry traditionally it's like you know they're closed at five o'clock and a lot of the people are working you know they work all day how are they going to meet with somebody if they're closed you know so having that flexibility and and you know looking out for for my clients and and I say I don't have a day off you know um, but if I want to I could choose any day that I want to be off so I love that flexibility for not only for my business and the the, the people that are you know I'm training, but also for the clients, giving them the flexibility. Blanca, um, currently right now, do you go where your clients are at because of you know or or how does that work? Like you said, because they they don't work a traditional nine to five. I mean, and I and I know that you know a lot of Latinos, if you know Latinos, your client base, they're hardworking people, and they don't work nine to five. They'll work eight to seven. Yeah. So, uh, so do, do you meet them at their place of work? Do you, do you go to them? Definitely. So before it was, you know, it was different, right? I would do a lot more of that. Um, I, you know, because I remember it's a referral, I'm able to go to their house as well, you know, oh. and meet outside. So the good thing is that I would ask them, you know, do you want to meet at the office? We can meet, uh, you know, because of the referral, right? I, I don't have a problem coming to you. A lot of people have all their statements and all their paperwork at home, and it's much easier to, to pull everything out. And like you said, we work hard, you know, and so sometimes it's late. Sometimes it's work, it weekends as well. And to me, I love what I do. So it doesn't feel like work for me because I'm making a difference in somebody's life and I'm sitting down mm -hmm. and family getting to know them. And so definitely I will do that. Now, of course, things have changed. And believe it or not, like there's times when people do want me to come by and we, you know, we have the safety precautions, but um, there's people that are getting better and better at Zoom. So the people that you least expected, they're figuring it out or they're having their kids help them, you know, connect. Yeah. So. That, that's awesome. Their kids are on Zoom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're yeah, showing they're their Zoom. parents and grandparents how to use Zoom. <laughs> Yeah, they're on Zoom more, more than their kids want to be on Zoom, and so, um, but yeah, and, and that's great that they have them, um, you know, nearby so they can teach them how to do, use these tools, right? That everyone's using, so they're not missing out. Right. The final question, which is amid the gloomy news of COVID nineteen, the economy, racial tensions in America, etc., how are you keeping positive? What words of encouragement can you share with our virtual audience? Let's start off with Manny. Oh, uh, so as, as far as keeping positive, I've been really blessed to have an amazing family, uh, great friends that are also in the sales industry, uh, you know, an, an amazing girlfriend and, and her family as well that have been just very supportive and, you know, just great people to be around. So when you surround yourself with those people, you really have not been able to keep me down to a certain degree. Uh, one word of encouragement that I've always kept throughout the years, uh, my grandfather said, you know, being first generation, uh, I've always been, you know, really wanting to, you know, make sure I make my family proud. And, and, and when I started working in sales, my grandfather would just say, all they could say is no. That's it. All they can say is no. And then that's one of the things that has kept me going throughout the years is by calling, by interacting, by meeting people. If you want to meet with me, you want to talk to me, that's fine. 
all they could say is no. And so I've never really taken that to heart with all the gloominess and all that jazz. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's just surrounding yourself with a great support team that's helped me afloat. Great. Thank you, Manny. Alana. So these aren't my words, but um, don't worry about tomorrow. Let tomorrow worry about itself. Um, sometimes it's not you. It's just the times or the situation. So uh, just keep steady. Keep doing what you know you need to do um, because that'll allow the opportunities uh, to come to you. So uh, sometimes you can get frustrated with what you think might happen, but just you know, don't even don't even give that to worry. Don't don't allow yourself to worry about anything. Just continue to do what you know you can do and do it well. And you know, opportunities will come. Blanca. Uh, so yeah, I, I totally agree with that. And also, um, I always say, if they say, you know, you know, right now is not a good time. It's not right now. If they're saying no, it's not right now. Um, but it doesn't mean that it's not going to be in the future, right? So always be optimistic. And one thing is just being grateful. All this chaos and everything that's happening out there, we can't be grateful and upset at the same time. We can't be. It, it, we're either one or the other. Just like we can't be excited and nervous at the same time. It's either one or the other. So just being optimistic and, and being grateful. Being grateful that, you know, what we do have, our family, our kids, you know, and, um, and, and where we are right now. Um, I think that's, that's huge. And then not really watching the news before bed because then it's going to keep, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like keep you up. If you want a good night's sleep, I'll stay away from that. <laughs> I agree with you on that one. Yeah, me too, 100%. Yeah, one question that isn't here, but I did want to ask everyone um, because this question was asked of me earlier uh, uh, last week um, in a webinar that I was in. Uh, what was your first sales job? And I'll start off with uh, Alana. Me? Oh, well, I mean, I, I, Pure sales job, it would probably be the or your role, first, my, your my last first job where you use sales. So it doesn't even have oh. to be professional. It can be you as a kid. Oh, for sure. As a kid and going door to door when that was a thing when, you know, and everyone in the neighborhood already knew me. I had like business relationships, um, you know, uh, so I think we had a. I think it was around Christmas time and we would do a charity sale and, and I was definitely the biggest person on the block as far as sales, because everyone just knew me, everyone knew what they were going to buy every year. So that was great. And that was a very cherished time too, because they just don't have that anymore. I don't see those opportunities for kids anymore. So definitely plan to make that opportunity somehow for my kids in another way. Yeah. And, and that's something that uh, I think that our, our kids are missing now is, mm -hmm. is that, that that feeling that you get when you earn money you know when you're when you're a teenager right that you can you can you can exchange something for and get money for it and 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 the lasting impression that it leaves on you i think it's a great feeling so um and there's very few opportunities now that we have that because a lot of those things have kind of been taken away you know from when, when you think about what have been traditionally uh first jobs for for teenagers that doesn't exist anymore Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Emmanuel? Uh, it's kind of spot on as far as just fundraising for uh, sports teams that I was a part of. Uh, you know, a lot of times, you know, my mom, single mother, just doing the best she could. Uh, you know, I need cleats or I need this, I need that. And, you know, she couldn't get them. So just helping my team sell, you know, chocolate bars or sell, you know, different different items to help fundraise for a team trip or, you know, things like that. Or if it's a youth group. You know, and we we're going to like church camp or to like getaway, you know, raising money myself to to be able to attend these events uh, and, and make the, the pain a little the financial pain a little less on my mom uh, was how I started a very at a very young age uh, with the sales game. And then, you know, and when I was in school, I was like, you know what, I'm probably not going to be an engineer. So that's where I kind of uh, embrace the <laughs> embrace the sales, the, the, the sales aspect of my life, and my career. So that, that was pretty much it. it all started from, you know, just trying to help my mom out and just buy my own stuff. when I was having my sports. That's awesome. Thank you, Manny. Blanca. Um, so I never had a, a, a job in sales or anything to do with sales, except for, uh, you know, growing up, I was very competitive when it came to when it came to, you know, selling, uh, you know, something from school, right? Like Imanol said, um, there's always fundraisers. And my son growing up, he went to a Catholic school. So there's always a fundraiser, right? And so I was, they would always say, you know, the, there's different tiers. And if you you know, you saw this many, I don't know, chocolates or cookies or whatever it is, you're going to get this uh, spirit wear. And I'm like, we're going to do this. Yeah. 
always always selling doughs of cookie dough, you know, like uh, uh, buckets of cookie dough and like all these things. And I, I love that. And he's like, mom, you're crazy. I'm like, I'm gonna take a picture, I'm going to upload it. And we're going to, you know, you know, let everybody know it's a fundraiser for it's going back to a good cause. So I've always loved doing that. And then I never knew that it was tied to sales. I always shied away from sales. So everybody who <laughs> shies away from sales, you know, take look at it in a different way. It's, you know, it's fun. So I always say fun because you're interacting with people, you're meeting people. And, um, and, and it, it is, I really believe in that journey is, is about thinking it's fun, it's fun. I, I always wonder how many people actually end up cooking those cookie dough and how many people just eat it. Because it's delicious either way. Either way is good. Yeah. You know what? Can we answer one or two questions that are in the chat? Because there's there's some people that have asked. Uh, one lady asked uh, Blanca, "What is your email?" I shared it. Oh, you tra- you shared it. Hello at blancasepulveda.com. Okay. Oh, uh, Carmen uh, is asking Emmanuel, "Could you repeat the name of the book you recommended?" Uh, the two books I recommended was Extreme Prospecting. Uh, by Jeb Blunt. That's more for like the virtual sales aspect and how to transition from the face-to-face sales every day to more along the lines of being prepared and uh, being able to build those quick interpersonal relationships via Zoom. Uh, so that's the first one. And then the second one was called Extreme Ownership. Um, and I forgot the name of the, uh, the, um, the author, but I could send it to you if you just put your email down. Uh, and then uh, it's more along the lines of an ex-Navy SEAL and the Navy SEALs training his experiences he was deployed uh, three or four times uh, and then how he was able to convert that into the business role in your business career um, on that level. Great. And we also, we have a comment from uh, Vincent Williams, who's a great friend of, uh, of ours uh, uh, and the president a of uh, MSDC. So he says a great panel you've put together here. Looking forward for the, con- looking forward to the conversation. So uh, Vincent, th- thank you for taking uh, time out, out of your busy day for, for joining uh-huh. us. I really appreciate that. Uh, and then uh, we have Hannah Fernandez, who is the chair, uh, a chairwoman, first chairwoman of SCORE, who is, uh, SCORE is a, is a business uh, mentoring organization nationwide. Uh, and the Chicago chapter is the third, third largest chapter in the country with over 300 mentors. Uh, but she says, great insights. Thank you all. Uh, stay well, everyone. So thank you. Thank you for the well wishes. Um, thank you for the participants. And thank you for our virtual attendees. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are working hard on planning all our virtual um, our virtual uh, activities for 2021. So, And we also are planning uh, our in-person networking events because we don't know where this is going to go. But obviously, we are not going to do that unless we can't do it. Uh, uh, safely and responsibly and following the guidelines of the city and state. So, but I don't see that happening until July of, uh, of the next, next year. But in the meantime, uh, you know, I'm going to be working hard with my team to create uh, webinars and different uh, virtual events and activities that, that can provide our professional development and learning and all the things that we need to, you know, really to, to manage and uh, manage this, this, uh, this world that we're living in now, I know in my heart that it's temporary and we will get past to it. Maybe the world that we, we will get back to will not be uh, the normal world that we knew before, but regardless, I think we're all gonna be, we're all gonna be better for it if, if we learn some, some things that from, from this pandemic and we learn the things that really matter um, and also the things that, um, that, you know, that, that are going to make us better, you know, people, whether it's our, or in our professional life or, or our personal life. So um, I want to say thank you to our participants, our audience, and I wish everyone a very happy Thanksgiving break, a holiday. I think all of us are looking forward to that. Be safe and be careful and we'll catch you on the next one. So thank you again. Take care. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Bye, everyone. See ya. Bye. Bye.